We are dangerous when we are not conscious of our responsibility for how we behave, think, and feel. Marshall B. Rosenberg. We are talking about the importance of self-awareness. We're your hosts, Nick Smith. And Kylie Jo Smith. And today's episode is called Check Yourself. Hey, so uh, today we are talking about uh, self-awareness. And it really goes back to something that we have said a lot on the podcast, which is what other people think of you is none of your business. Mm. Uh, But the contrary to that is what you think about other people and how you feel about other people. Definitely your business. Definitely your business. All your business. (laughs) All in your business. That's your business. It's entirely in the realm. Yes. It's in the pocket of your business. It it is the pocket. It's in the the essential pocket of business. Anyway. Business pocket. So a lot of times (laughs) we think that the damage in relationships and situations is a result of people thinking too much about others' thoughts. And there's yeah. a lot of that. Like we have an issue managing perceptions. Mm-hmm. This is a human problem, not just like this is just a Nick problem or just a Kylie Joe problem. Um, but really a lot of conflicts could be avoided or handled better mm-hmm. with not only that emotional intelligence, like why we feel the way we feel and what these feelings mean. Navigating social clues and yes, emotional clues. Like that's yeah. definitely important. And we talked a little bit about that um, in other episodes, but it's also a matter of, of having a mature and humble self-awareness. Yeah, people, adults, and the longer I'm an adult, the more this proves true. Uh, adults don't have a lot of self-awareness about how they, uh, like they just don't take pauses to understand mm-hmm. where they are in the moment. Like yeah. we try to teach kids, at least we try to teach our children, like hey, take a second, breathe. Yeah. What's upsetting you? Why, why, why are you upset? Yeah, what's, what's going on and yeah. why? Yeah. Um, but adults don't do that a lot. No. And I've I've noticed, too, that we it seems like the older people are, we tend to give them more of a pass for not having social or excuse me, self-awareness. Oh, definitely. We give them like like we. OK, so we've all talked about Nana and maybe her racist tendencies, like <laughs> not you know, not literal, Nana, not literal, but like the figure of Nana. Nana. It's like, oh, well, but they were raised back in the time when that's right. You know, calling people Negro was like that was that was polite. Mm-hmm. Um. So we, we make exceptions for them being disrespectful or disparaging towards a certain ethnic group. Even though they didn't have cell phones back then, but somehow Nana knows how to FaceTime. It's weird. She's learned weird. some things. She's, she's adapted <laughs> in some ways, but yet emotionally we don't yeah. hold people to a certain standard. We, we're afraid, I think, a lot of times to hold people to a certain standard because there are things that come with accountability, mm-hmm. like rejection and criticism, that we don't want to have to navigate. Mm-hmm. And so like, it's interesting to me how many people I've met that it's like, whoa, like, there's a severe lack of self-awareness in the situation that, yeah. that I think in some ways you've been coddled to, Whew. to believe that it's okay, that you well, don't have to take it, take responsibility for your actions. I also think that we choose to be non self-aware and we choose to give people a pass mm-hmm. because we don't want people holding us accountable. Come on. Like, I don't want to hold this person accountable because of the golden rule, right? Treat others how Ooh, you want to be treated. And I don't want to be held accountable. So I'm not going <laughs> to hold you accountable. <laughs> Listen, Took I'm gonna care make a pass of it. for you. So, <laughs> wink, wink. That's what I would want. You right? know what you it is. You understand. You already know the game. Um, so, I, I think that I think you're 100 percent correct. I think we which do. we just have to say, like, just just to be clear, that's not a proper application oh, of the golden yes. rule. Mm-mm, it's mm-mm. not not good. That's eisegesis. Yes. Uh, that's not the way we do things. Yeah. Um, so, I guess we have to be very clear about what self awareness is mm-hmm. because self awareness isn't telling it like it is. Self-awareness mm. isn't making excuses for your shortcomings. And like saying like, like, well, I'm, that's just the way I am. I'm blunt. I'm blunt and I'm going to say things in your face and I'm going to, and you're just, I might to cuss at it. you and I'm very aware of my behavior. <laughs> that's not, I mean, yes, there's an element of that that's self-aware, a little bit. but there's also an element of that that's extremely immature mm-hmm. and unprofessional in certain settings. And not only um, unprofessional, it's um, completely narcissistic because it's about yeah. other people making exceptions for you. So like, I, I'm just the way I am. It's not you being self-aware. It's you making other people aware of your faults. Whoa. Listen, these are the things okay. I got. Okay. <laughs> so y'all need to figure this out. Y'all figure out how to navigate so me. It's kind of handcuffing the room. It, it is. Like, it is a little bit. Okay. So like actual self-awareness. Um, 
and I, I took this off of the Wikipedia. And if you're a teacher and you're like, you can't quote Wikipedia, then just email us and let us know that. Well, if the definition's wrong, then I guess that's true. <laughs> uh, this is what the, the wiki says. Okay. Self-awareness is how an individual consciously knows and understands their own character, feelings, motives, and desires. Hmm. Now, I like that definition. <laughs> I could have went with Webster's or Miriam's or yeah. Miriam Webster even. Uh, they are one and the same. The same thing. <laughs> I could have went with any other definition, but I like that one. Because it, first off, self-awareness is how an individual, Mm -hmm. so it's about you, how you consciously, so you're acknowledging, you're mentally engaging in this thought process, Mm -hmm. and then understanding these elements of your being, your character, your feelings, your motives, and your desires. Yeah, so it's not just knowing that you have a short fuse, Mm -hmm. it's understanding um, how that plays into you as a person, like there's, and it gives like the fourfold elements of a person, like, yeah, yeah, so it, it involves a little bit more than just knowing the flaws that you have, which we tend to think is all that self-awareness is. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm really impatient. Or, Again, you know, I'm lazy. It's I, fine. I have yeah. bad handwriting or, you know. I have really what, bad breath in the morning. Right. Ew. <laughs> but just you do kidding. need to exercise some <laughs> self-awareness in that. Um, but, but even taking that example, I know that I have bad breath in the morning. So if I'm, if I'm aware of this, this helps me interact with the people around me in a way that is um, respectful and mm-hmm. kind and, following the golden rule, I'm not going to get in their face and breathe and talk heavily and use a lot, a lot of H's. H's. Yeah. Like, explosives. Yeah. I'm not going to do that yeah. because I know that my breath is bad. <laughs> and so I'm going to save that snippet and just <laughs> use it in different places. Hold on, babe. Remember what you said? Remember I'm not going to do joke? that because I know that my breath is bad. <laughs> <laughs> the beauties of sound design. Uh-huh. Um, no, it's important. Like even taking it beyond the, the, the physical attributes, because most of the time self-awareness has to do with the internal Uh, stuff right your character your feelings Mm -hmm. your motives and your desires those are all internal Mm -hmm. things and so your self-awareness has to do with all the stuff inside you that's happening all the emotional stuff and all the 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 way that you behave your motives your actions Mm -hmm. um, not just what you did but why you did it Mm. it's a lot of analyzing your why yeah and um if i i honestly believe that if adults can do more of that uh, there would be a lot less nonsense in the world. Come on. Um, if we could just analyze the why, like, why am I saying this? Why am I doing, why mm-hmm. am I upset? Why is this person irritating me? Mm-hmm. Why, like, why? And and not say it in a way of like, why can't you do better? Or why is this thing? Yeah. But why are they upsetting me? Like, yeah. why is it putting it on the other person? Exactly. Yeah. But actually taking, uh, and taking things um, into consideration based on your character, your feelings, your motives and, and your desires mm-hmm. and, and really thinking about those things and contemplating. And you've said before, like take, what is it? 90 seconds. Yeah. I think it's 90 seconds. It takes you to actually process a thought Yeah, or uh, process what you hear, what, what's being presented to you. Yeah. And if you, if we could do that, if we could actually take 90 seconds, um, before responding or reacting or whatever to, to be, to exercise self-awareness, mm-hmm. like, okay, I feel I'm getting upset. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you missed our last uh, episode last week where we talked about the ACEs, about the um, adverse childhood experiences, Mm -hmm. um, I I told the story about how I felt welling up in me, like frustrate or like that spotlight feeling, right? Mm -hmm. That like everybody was looking at me, but it wasn't like, why is everyone looking at me? Yeah. No, it's, I had to take that moment and be like, why do I feel this way? Yeah. Like I had to process that feeling. Yeah. And it had you not, I think the manifestation of that could have easily been being defensive towards the presenter, the person Mm -hmm. that was uh, teaching that particular module or rejecting the information altogether. And then we do that a lot, right? Like if you hear information, I know that there have been times where like, if I listen to someone talk about physical health Mm -hmm. or eating healthy or like nutrition in particular, right? Like I know that I'm falling short of that standard or if I know like, Oh man, yeah, I did eat too much junk food. Mm -hmm. And so I, I start to feel defensive because I know that I've fallen short of a standard and because I know that I'm one who I tend to value standards Mm -hmm. and meeting those or exceeding those because, um, I have a performance based mentality. Um, so then I start to get defensive. I may snap at someone who's merely sharing information that's true and, and has like reputable, um, fact or evidence based things to support it. But I might snap back at them yeah. because I'm feeling defensive and I feel like I'm falling short of the standard. It has nothing to do with the person. That's it has good. everything to do with, well, I don't like um feeling like a failure or feeling mm-hmm. like I am not doing well. And so all of that though, like if if I don't check that, mm-hmm. I might end up clapping back at somebody yeah. or treating someone poorly or rejecting the information altogether. Like, well that's not really true. You can eat it doesn't really matter if you eat that because this isn't this. And yeah. we, we do both both and at times in situations. Yeah. So. And it's all because you don't take that time. Like if you don't take the time to be self-aware. Right. And so the, the, the different areas that we're talking about. So, um, character, 
Mm-hmm. If you don't understand what character is, then you mm. don't have it. I'm just kidding. Wow. I'm jo- totally joking. Okay, um, it's not true. No, not true, character Nick. has to do with, um, I'm trying to think of a good way to put it. Well, okay, It's so not your personality, but it's part of it. It's your, part of your personality. Yeah, your personality is like, it comes with those things. That's like the nuances of you. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you're you're comedic. You like to laugh at things or you're yeah. more, you know, introverted, introspective. Um, but it really has to do with like integrity. Yes. Thank you. And I, responsibility. See, that's why I keep her around. <laughs> she and so like things. integrity is that I think that we teach little kids like um, it's doing the right thing when no one's looking. Yes. It's doing the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing. Yeah. With no like you're not getting anything out of it. Um, there's no rewards if you do it. And there's no like you're not thinking of only the punishments if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, your character also has to do with your reliability. Mm, like, yeah. can people count on you when when the chips are down? Do you do what you say you're gonna do? Yeah, and what I I always notice character flaws. Like, I can't always pick out good character things, but I can find character flaws. Mm. And like a difference between a character flaw and a uh, like a mistake, um, in my opinion. This is in my humble opinion. I am H. Stop talking about my wife like that. <laughs> you are not. Uh, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Um, so the difference between someone accidentally like knocking a kid over, say walking past a child and right. bumping them. That's an accident. Yeah. Uh, someone who takes like goes out of their way to push children over. Right. That's a character flaw. Yes. Like there's something wrong with you. Yes. And so I can acknowledge like character has to do with that has to do with integrity. It has to do with mm-hmm. your honesty, with your reliability. It has to do with like what we would consider. Are you a good or a bad person? Yeah. And um, responsibility. Like ooh, the person yeah. who knocks a child over. Okay. Maybe, maybe you do it frequently. Maybe it's a thing that you do. Like you habitually are <laughs> knocking know who we're talking people about. over. If this is this you, isn't a real it. person. We're first just, off, we're just, if you're knocking people over. I'm knocking children that over. That's very, very disrespectful. Wrong with um, you. But no, someone who does that, but instantly acknowledges that it was wrong and yes, and repents and genuinely feels sorry. That's, that's a part of their character that actually is good. So even yes. though they may, and, with um with all ages we see this like people who constantly make jokes about things and mm-hmm. then they go too far yeah it's like oh, you, you did it again you started making fun of this person and it's like yeah. okay I'm sorry look I, I shouldn't have done that like that was really wrong you have a character flaw of taking things too far being yeah. way too sarcastic and not, not realizing not caring about other people's feelings right but you yeah. have you do have a character strength in that you recognize when you're doing wrong and you want to make it right. That's good. So uh, so character being aware of your character is important for self awareness mm-hmm. uh, feelings. Well, here, let's come back to feelings because that's what a lot of this is <laughs> about. Because feelings is, is everything. Right. Everything's feelings. Um, motives. Ooh, motives. Okay. So um, you are either in your operation, in your relational operation, mm. you are either trying to obtain- Relational operation. <laughs> you're either trying to obtain something or to avoid something. Mm, that's good. And in that, so like, and that's that's just going to the base level of yeah, human super interaction. Um, there are tactics we develop based on what our motives are. Yes. So- um, tactics being, um, we oftentimes think of manipulation being a, a huge tactic. It's, it's yeah. commonly, um, employed in relationships and in uh, professional situations and all of that, but it's not just that there are, there are like the, the motive to obtain safety mm-hmm. in a relationship where you feel unsafe. That may, yeah. you may over time develop a tactic of, uh, being reclusive. Mm, that's good. Because you don't want to open yourself up to the vulnerability in a relationship. Now that yes. those, that's not healthy, but the motive is safety or yeah. to, to obtain safety. Yeah. And I think understanding that um, a tactic is the, the manifestation, mm-hmm. how you go about the motive. And so a lot of times we will judge someone's tactics, yes. uh, any, even our own tactics. Like yeah. if something doesn't work, we're like, oh, I need to do that better instead of understanding why was I doing that in the first place. Mm-hmm. Or how. Yeah. I mean, you can do something in a way that's like, okay, well, I see what you were trying to avoid. It's not bad, Mm -hmm. but it was the way you were trying to do it that really set you up for failure. Yes. And Um, so then the other thing that you have to be aware of your motives to be Mm self-aware and then desires. Um, Mm. And the desire thing is what is it that you are like, honestly, what are you after? Yeah. What's your objective? Yeah. And like, not just your motive of like your motives, part of it, but your desire Mm -hmm. is like, I want a spouse i want Mm -hmm. this i my ultimate desire is to be uh wealthy um Mm. okay that's my desire what's the motive behind that desire the motive behind the desire to be wealthy is safety yeah so like they work together but Mm -hmm. you have to be aware of that now getting back to feelings self-awareness in your feelings is something that adults i think struggle with the most yeah and especially right now like especially in this what is this unprecedented time (laughs) i i think it's been a year, so now we're president. Now it is president. Pre- presidented? Presidente. 
I don't know if it's presidented, but it's oh, definitely. It is definitely pre presidente. Precedented. Um, but this this really intense season that we're all in. Yeah. We not only have to, um, like, we're, we're managing a lot of things. There's a mm -hmm. lot of, like, okay, well, am I staying far enough apart? Am I make, making sure that I'm keeping these people safe and I'm avoiding exposure to these people? And yeah. all of those things. And so there's, like, a there's an external thing that's influencing that. But at the same time, we have these internal feelings about things that should be affecting how we process these things. But I think yeah. there's a lot of like stuffing and an attempt at self-regulation that's actually not healthy. Like mm -hmm. I'm trying to just, oh, everything's fine. I'm, I, everything's fine. I'm totally Ignoring fine with it. Actual feelings. Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, this is very uncomfortable and frustrating and nobody likes it. Mm -hmm. Nobody is excited about these things we have to do let's let's be okay with our feelings let's acknowledge at least like okay i'm feeling really frustrated i'm feeling like um my my freedom's being taken away from me to be able to do whatever i want and yeah. i'm really mad about that and i think feel, the tricky thing about feelings is feelings can present in ways that aren't true so like you can and if uh, feel your lot, feelings <laughs> feel your feelings but you can be wrong different episode um but no like you're you're feeling sad this happens a lot with men um, feeling sad or rejected, but what they display is anger. Mm. So someone's like, okay. why are you angry? It's like, I'm not actually angry. Yeah. The feeling that I have is an anger. The feeling I have is rejection or the feeling I have is, is sadness or mm. is hurt. Um, but I'm displaying anger. And so yeah. I think for, for us to be self-aware, like you have to know, um, yeah, I may be joking or making fun of people. I'm not feeling like, narcissistic or whatever i'm not feeling like antagonistic mm -hmm. i'm actually feeling defensive ah because yeah. i don't want people to know something so now i'm, I'm deflecting so, so then you then you would look at your desire and your motive yes and the tactic your tactic would be humor yeah and yeah. so you have to understand what your feelings are because your feelings uh, or you have to be aware of your feelings mm -hmm. and and another thing about feelings is you have to know that your feelings are not truth Come your on. feelings point to a truth about you but the way you feel about something doesn't necessarily mean that that thing is true. Yeah. Um, and as an example, because someone right now is going to be like, well, you can't say, um, but I can't because here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm going to. How many times have you been in a, a situation where someone says, well, I feel like that's wrong, but they're the one that's actually wrong. It's like, yeah. I don't care what you feel. You're, yeah. you're actually you're the wrong one. So, okay. So side note, uh -huh. this, just a, like kind of a, I guess it's maybe a caveat. I don't know to this thing. Okay. Have you seen the video? It's like two years old. Of the guy yelling at the other guy about the Wicked Witch of the East. Oh, the Wizard of Oz argument. Wizard of Oz argument. It's I think like, it's older than two it's, years. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty old. It's, it's older, but it's like 30 seconds long. It's not even that long, but yeah. it is so incredible. It's such a, to me, it's like a case study. Yeah. And not being emotionally aware, like self-aware of your emotions. Because yeah. this guy is just, he's livid about this. And Screaming. It's, and it's like, it's humorous. Like we look at it, we're like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Like this guy is getting so mad. But at the same us, time, yeah. in that moment, it was really real to him. And he was right. <laughs> it was very and real. And he was wrong. He was 100% wrong. He's wrong. like, she's a princess or well, whatever yeah. he says. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's just a small example of like, yeah, you may feel really like mad that this, whatever happened before the camera turned on, mm -hmm. but you're wrong. Yeah. Or how many times have you been in that position yourself where you get really upset about something and then it turns out to not be true and you're like, oh yeah. Oh, okay. I've been there. We're fine. I've, I've um, been there. You know, so <laughs> mad cause somebody forgot your birthday and then you get a birthday card in the mail. You're like, oh, I, oh they didn't shoot. forget. So like I felt upset. Yeah. Because they forgot yet my feelings weren't true. So what I'm saying is yeah. your feelings don't dictate what is true about your situation. Your feelings dictate something about you that mm -hmm. is so like it, they're um, conduits. They're yeah. they're weather veins or they direct us. Yeah, it's it's a th it's a thermometer for us. Mm, that's good. Whereas we we understand we ha we are the thermostat. We can change that. We can change the the temperature of the room mm -hmm. um, if we're aware of what's going on. Yes. And. Honestly, I would say for someone in that situation, like when, if you're like, okay, it's my birthday and you know, my best friend didn't even call me Yeah. and that, you know, I get angry at my best friend. So then I'm planning how I'm going to like, I'm not going to answer their next text and I'm going to this, this, this. Okay. Well, that's not really healthy, <laughs> but let, let's step back and say, okay, when they call you and you're like, oh man, that's really frustrating that mm -hmm. I did, I did all that and I wasted all that energy. Yeah. Well, let's go back to like, back to your character, your feelings, your motives, your desires. Like, okay, you were feeling rejected you're mm -hmm. feeling 
forgotten. You're feeling left out. You're feeling hurt. Yeah. You're hurt. Why are you hurt? Because you care about your friend and you think your friend cares about you. And the thought that your friend would forget about you on this special day in your life was hurtful. So go back to the very root. Okay. I felt hurt, which isn't a bad thing to feel, but then why did I react that way? Instead of telling my friend or going to say, Hey, I I was kind of hurt that you forgot my birthday. And I like in my mind, I just heard an argument that if this is your argument, I, I heard you. So um, <laughs> in my mind, I heard the I argument. I got you. I got you. I'm holding you down. Um, like, it, what? that's a lot. That's complicated. I just want to do what I do. And I don't need to sit back and think about everything that I'm doing. I don't need to analyze. Like, So I don't operate like that. That's not how I do things. Um, I wasn't raised like you. I don't, I don't know how to do these things. Um, but here's what I want to tell you, um, person, whoever you are, uh, ma- imaginary person in my mind. Uh-huh. Uh, when you are not self-aware, when you are going through life with this, um, not ambiguous, this oblivious, uh, mind state of how you are and how you operate, um, you are still influencing and affecting those around you. You are still operating in community and you're still going to reap the, the benefits or the consequences Mm. of the way that you behave. And a lot of times we live in this state of not, of being oblivious to our, ourself And yet we see a lot of stuff happening in our life and we feel out of control. We feel Mm. like things are happening to us. We feel like we're not actually or actively participating in our own life. We're victims. Exactly. And a lot of that comes down to how self-aware are you being Mm. um, in in these moments, in these decision-making moments. And so there are things that happen in your life from not being self-aware. Yeah. And so I just want to give you these things yeah. so you know, so you're, so you're aware yeah. of what would happen if you're not aware. Nah. Um, so one thing that happens is when you're not self-aware, you mm-hmm. are reactive. You're reactive and you are triggered. You go around mm. uh, responding. And I know triggered is a trigger word because people want to be like, oh yeah, trigger, snowflake, all that stuff. Right. But the truth is a trigger is just something that um, engages something else. Right. Well, it, just mechanically speaking. A trigger is a thing you pull back on a weapon before you fire it. And so a trigger is a thing that will lead you to want to prepare yourself for an altercation or for a disagreement, for an argument. Well, it doesn't always have to be that, though. It's, okay. You can be triggered into sadness. True. You can be yes. triggered into frustration. Yes. I should you say can... into an emotional reaction. Exactly. It, it's the thing that trips something else yeah. that, that causes another emotion to happen. And so if There's you're... no way to describe a trigger other than calling it a trigger. <laughs> I'm sure there it, is. We could... it's, it's a thing that we... triggers Dang it. another thing. Thing. That's not uh, okay. Mm. Um, but if you live that way, if you're living reactively, if you're living um, just constantly going from trigger to trigger to trigger, um, I have this image of like a Rube Goldberg machine, right? Mm. Where it's like, well, this thing happened that caused you to do this, yeah. and, that re- and then this thing happened. Um, you're going through an emotional roller coaster every day. Yeah. Because you have no control of your life. You have no say in how things happen. You're just responding and reacting mm-hmm. and reacting and reacting. And it not only causes an emotional roller coaster for you, but it causes one for those around you. Yeah. Because people start walking on eggshells around you and they're like, well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to trigger Nick. Yeah. Because la- yesterday he was fine yeah. because he woke up, he had a good breakfast, he showed up. But then the day before that, he woke up late and then he came in yelling at me because yeah. I asked him what time it was. So like, I don't know how to deal with this person. Right. Because- you don't know the expectations. Yeah, you don't understand the they're parameters. They're not self-aware yeah. enough to to take responsibility for who they are. Yeah. And I think one of the hardest triggers to navigate in relationship is that of losing control. Mm-hmm. When the trigger is a person not having control over yeah. others or over the situation, it makes it extremely difficult to engage with them in a healthy way. Yeah. It makes it very difficult for that person to engage with the world in a healthy way. And so um, that I think is like a a far extreme of like the worst is when that's the trigger. And, and we all, we all understand like the world is out of our control. That's right. Every situation, other people are out of our control, um, situations, the weather. I mean, these things we, we don't have control over. And so if, if that's the external trigger, you have to work even harder to not avoid your trigger in a sense of like, well, I guess I just have to not be around things that are going to be out of my control, (laughs) but no, we have to understand, okay, why, why is this such a specific trigger for me? Why is this thing so sensitive for me? Yeah. And what are the feelings I'm having Mm -hmm. surrounding it that will hopefully help me to understand where this stems from? I think this also, um, brings up an interesting point that your triggers, um, and how you respond to your triggers and how you navigate, uh, your environment, Mm -hmm. um, whether you expose yourself to something that triggers you or not, that's your responsibility. Mm. You you won't know. I mean I mean think about epileptics, right? People who okay. have epileptic seizures. Thinking about them. Um, okay. 
thought about. Um, a lot of times movies or nightclubs, whatever concerts, there mm. will be a disclaimer. Hey, just so you know, if you're an epileptic, there are things that may trigger a seizure. Yeah. Um, now it's that person's responsibility whether or not they want to walk into that situation right. or not. Now, if this person doesn't know they're an epileptic or they're ignoring the fact that, whoa, every time lights flash in my eye, I have a seizure. That's weird. Yeah. Because they're not self-aware. They're not engaging in self-awareness to yeah. be like, oh, two plus two is four. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Lights plus me equals seizure. Yeah. Then, then they're walking into situations and they're feeling out of control because like, well, I don't even know what happens. Yeah. And so your triggers, understanding what your triggers are, how to um, navigate situations so that you're not being triggered, mm-hmm. um, especially if you have uh, survived abuse or, or anything like that. Yeah. Understanding your triggers is your responsibility. Yeah. You can't put that on the world and be like, well, every time I go to this place, they always do stuff that, that makes me upset. Yeah. Then stop going to that place. That's right. your responsibility. Right. And, and even so- that language you use, like even <laughs> that makes me upset. Mm-hmm. Like, that is a, that's a start of self-awareness. Mm, I guess that's that is, a, that's, yeah. that's a tiny little start. It's a step in the right direction to say, okay, well, when I'm around this thing, there's a feeling that is induced because of it. Mm-hmm. Um, or when I hear these words or when this music is played or when this, that, or the other, and yeah. this is not a pass. I just want to throw this out. This is not a pass for you to put yourself in a padded room yeah. in a sense. Like this is unless not you're crazy. And you unless need you absolutely need that kind of help and, and support, <laughs> but there, it, it can become very easy to then um, manage what every single aspect of an environment that you go into. Well, like yeah. this is my trigger. And so therefore I can't have that. And this is a trigger for me. Okay. There's a, there's another step to understanding your triggers, which is seeking help, which is, which is, and we'll get yeah. into that with practicality, but it doesn't stop with just, well, this is a trigger for me. And here's my list of 75 triggers. Well, and going into the, your triggers being your responsibility, mm-hmm. When you can't walk into a situation and say, these are all the things you can't do. Yes. Because that's not putting, that's not taking responsibility. Yeah. That's still giving someone else the responsibility for managing you. Mm. All you can manage is you. And that's why you have to be self aware. Yes. Um, and with that, the like part of that is the blaming of other people yeah. for your actions. Yeah. Because if, if you're not self aware, you're not aware of your triggers, you're not aware of the things that upset you and frustrate mm-hmm. you, then anytime something happens, well, Kylie Joe made me mad. Yeah. And or in the situation, you'll start to bulldoze people mm-hmm. when they when they upset you, when mm-hmm. when there's something that is said or done that is a trigger for you or that even relates to your trigger. If someone yeah. points out to you, hey, Nick, I, it seems like every time you go to this place and you come back, you're really, really aggravated. Yeah, that's not what happens. That's not what happens at all. You have no idea what happens. But the reason that I'm, I'm aggravated is because of what they do mm-hmm. and also bulldozing when you're not self-aware bulldozing is um completely disregarding someone else so, or it's also known as gaslighting at times you can well like, i think they're two different things is it yeah because so I'm look it up bulldozing i'm gonna google it here's in my understanding while she's googling in my understanding if you're bulldozing somebody um you disregard completely what they're saying so if kylie joe comes in and she's upset um and she's upset maybe because um she's responding to something i'm doing if i'm not self-aware i'm gonna keep doing it and i'm just gonna ignore her completely Whereas gaslighting is playing to Kylie Joe and saying, well, that's not that big a deal. Like you're, you're overreacting. You're not, but whereas bulldozing, mm. if you're self-aware, if you're not self-aware and you bulldoze over somebody's emotions or feelings, you're, you're completely just ignoring, disregarding, okay. um, pushing it aside, not yeah. even acknowledging it. Gaslighting can be a form of bulldozing. Yes. But ultimately Gaslighting is is like you you're forcing someone to question what they know to be true. Yes. Um it's denying the reality that's being presented. Yeah. Um but it is like there's a there's an aspect of gaslighting that is bulldozing but you're right they are they, they can are be different. different. They can be different. They are different. Um so yeah, another thing mm-hmm. that can happen from being not being self-aware, sorry, mm-hmm. is um bitterness. Like because again, Wow. You're not aware of who, of how you respond to things. You're not aware of your triggers. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're, um, blaming other people for their actions, which then causes you to internalize a lot of bitterness. Yeah. It internalize a lot of things because, well, I can't go to this place anymore because they're always treating me this way. I can't deal wow. with this because that person's always doing, and that person's always doing, and this person's mm-hmm. all, and you start to internalize these sour grapes yeah. And so you're living in a, a state of bitterness without ever coming to an understanding that you participated in anything that mm-hmm. happened, mm-hmm. right? You're not self-aware enough to be like, oh, I'm probably, I, I can either choose to ignore this mm-hmm. or I can, I did do some stuff that yeah. may have caused them to respond to mm-hmm. me or, 
uh, if you're not living in self-awareness, then you're going to internalize a lot of bitterness. Yeah. It also causes like, there's some side effects of some of these things. Um, side effects may include Side effects it. are like judging mm -hmm. others based on their actions, but only wanting to be judged yourself on your intentions. Mm, yeah. um, like, well, well, yeah, you, but you did this, but I, you know, and I only did that because I was feeling this way. Well, that's, that's not being fair. It's not being um, equitable in how you're dealing with yeah. any situation. And it's also not having compassion on one another. Um, yeah. And it, it, it happens so quickly though. I know that, that's my go-to is like, I won't even consider like, Oh, well maybe this other person, maybe, maybe there's more to what they did than mm -hmm. just the action itself. Um, but yeah, at the same time I'll be like, but I was f my feelings, but it was my feelings. Well, and that can <laughs> trick you into thinking you're self-aware, right? Mm. Because I want to be judged by my intentions. I, I know my intentions, but you're not aware of how your actions are affecting other people. So you're yeah. still not self-aware. Yeah. Right. There's still a lack of self-awareness. Yeah. And then, um, you talked about the, um, kind of blaming other people and putting it on them. There's, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a side effect of that is pride and arrogance mm, that we can yeah. have. We'll, we'll always be the hero mm. or we'll always be the victim. Yeah. Always. And this comes from not being self-aware. This comes from, um, disregarding other people in the situation, like, um, to really paint ourselves as the one who is always doing this or who never gets to do this. This, this is truly a byproduct of not being self-aware because if we are able to take that step back or if mm -hmm. we have people in our lives that we trust to speak openly and honestly and say, Hey, I don't know if you realize this, but every time that someone challenges you or even hints at not agreeing with you, you completely bulldoze them. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you are aware of that and there's a right way to do this. And I know that this is something that I, I'm learning, like constantly trying to learn about this from people um, who have done it wrong, mm -hmm. people who do it great. And I think it's a matter of really understanding the relationship that you have with a person. Yes. If you have never, ever had the depth of relationship with someone to speak into their life, if they've never actually sought from you the insight of like, hey, can you tell me why I really struggle with this part of a relationship? Like, can you tell me, is there something you see? If they're not asking you mm -hmm. and you don't have that depth of relationship, you're probably going to do damage yeah, you probably by trying to assert that. yourself. Yeah, like, you know what? I'm going to tell you this about yourself <laughs> just because I think you need to hear it. Let me tell you everything like, you need to know about And a you. lot of times this comes just, just to be, just to like, just be real. A lot of times this real happens because we will see it. We'll see a tendency in someone. Mm -hmm. We don't have like a depth of relationship with them, but we're like, okay, well I see they, they kind of have an issue with like being like cussing at people and just cussing mm -hmm. them out. Like, the, and you see it over and over again, mm -hmm. but we never take the time to develop relationship mm -hmm. and we see it over and over and we notice that this is wrong and we see them and constantly they're doing this and doing this and doing this. And then finally one day mm -hmm. we've reached that threshold. Yeah. You have cussed out the 50th person in front of me. I am tired of seeing it. You are, I'm calling you out on the carpet yeah. and we have nothing to back it up. No relationship, to no back relationship it up. to back it up. Not like force. Uh, yeah. Sorry. But like <laughs> there's, and there may be factual like evidence of like, yes. well, you do do this but my heart is not in the right place. Now I'm irritated and now I'm frustrated at both my lack of action in the past, my inaction, and I'm frustrated at your actions and your behavior. Yeah. And so relationship is key in this. Yeah, that's good. So let's move on to practicality. Boom. So Kyla Joe, Yeah. what do I do to be more self-aware? Well, first, here's what you gotta do. You need to <laughs> Psalm 139 it. Psalm 139. Write that down. Psalm, right. Psalm, Psalm 139, it. He created me weird. in my mother's womb. Yeah, it's a great psalm, by there's the way. A it's of, a long psalm. A lot of parts it's like to it. the longest so one. So not that part. Not, the not that part. But no, there is a, there's, a ver there's a couple of verses, verse 23 and 24. It says, Search me, God, and mm -hmm. know my heart. That's Test good. me and know my concerns. Yeah. See if there is any offensive way in me. Lead me in the everlasting way. There's a couple of things in that that we're asking God to do. And this is a prayer. This is something that we like. If you're a believer in Christ, this is something that should be part of your daily reflection and practice where we so go to good. the Lord and say, God, like, I, I feel like I need you to, I need you to tell me where I fell short today. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that the Holy spirit does very well is illuminate the dark mm -hmm. parts of our life. And so yeah. if there's something in your heart or in your life that you're not sure about, or you it's blind, right? Cause if it's a blind spot, how do you know it's there if you don't know it's there? Right. And so you need, sometimes you need the Lord and here when he answers that prayer, um, through someone else, 
like my be least ready. favorite method. That be God ready uses. for that. That's my least favorite. As you're praying, like Lord, show me if there's any offensive way in me. And then someone comes to me like, "You offended me." And you're like, "How? No, you're crazy." Oh wait, I just oh, prayed. But I did just pray for that. And and here's the thing: okay. don't just say the prayer and like, "Oh, search me, Lord, and know my heart." Write it down. Mm-hmm. Um, really listen. Like take and again, ninety seconds. Right. Yeah. When the Lord is speaking to you, which I believe he answers this prayer, it's in his word. And so yeah. I, I don't believe that God put his word in there and then doesn't intend to actually act on this. So yeah, I think that's when, good. when we listen, like, okay, you know what? God's going to bring situations to your mind mm-hmm. from years before, maybe just from that morning that you're like, Oh dang, I didn't <laughs> even realize I did that. Like, I, was that me, God? Yeah. And in that moment, the first one we go to with our confession and repentance is the Lord yes. against you and you alone. Oh Lord, have I sinned? That's, that's another, right. that's in another Psalm. And so this Psalm 139 method is really that it's just taking that time alone with God to reflect, to reflect on, on where you need to grow with him, where yeah. you, you need to be more aware. And I think how you respond to that is necessary and how to as well. You need to respond with humility. You need mm. to respond, uh, th- which is something everybody struggles with. Yeah. is humility. And so as the Lord, except for Moses, right? Cause he was the most humble person on earth. So he wrote, uh, <laughs> so crazy. It's so funny. That's in general. Anyway. Um, but it was, he was the most Moses humble. No, the handsomest, handsomest? No. tallest. I think humble is humble's good. Humble will sound good in 2000 years. <laughs> um, but no, like respond with humility, like mm-hmm. whatever God puts on your heart, uh, Check your flesh. Take Mm -hmm. that moment to be self-aware as you start to rile yourself up against, well, Lord, I don't do that. That's not something I take a pause, take your 90 seconds and Mm -hmm. and go. Yeah. Um, The next thing you need to do practically is to check yourself. Check yourself. Like literally check, but no, um, (laughs) that's the name of this episode. But when you find yourself getting annoyed or irritated, this is something I truly triggered um, in this season have become more aware of Mm -hmm. and I've become more honest with myself and with my husband about things that bother me. It's good. Things that trigger me, things that I'm like, yeah, I don't like I, and I, this is huge for me because I, I think I grew up really believing it wasn't okay for me to not be okay with things. Yeah. And I've come to a a really healthy place. I'm coming to a healthy place of, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a problem for me. Yeah. I feel myself getting upset about that and I need to move. I need to get away from that. Yeah. That's good. And I'm so thankful for, um, the ability to, to physically break away. So there are three things. If you can remember an acronym for checking yourself S O S, which is the symbol or the, this, what is it? The acronym for help or whatever. It's like um, the Morse code. Signal Morse code. Help. I was like, what is this? It's not an S-O-S. acronym S O S, but it is an acronym for stop. Stop, observe, support. Give them all three up first. Thank you. SOS. I stop. had to I had to land on stop first. Good call. Stop, observe, seek support. Yes. So stop talking. Just <laughs> I think most arguments and issues <laughs> would be solved in our world. If just one person in the argument stopped talking. Yeah. Just stop and talking. The and rest of them would be solved if the other person stopped talking too. Yes. And I'm not saying stop talking, like just start swinging. Cause that's not, some people is like, once we're done talking, yeah. once we reach that point, yeah, we're, I got no more to say. No, I'm not say saying that. Else. Yeah. Stop engaging back away physically from the situation and the person. Yeah. If you need to. And just physically separate. And then observe, mm-hmm. take note of uh, your emotional state, take mm-hmm. note of your mental state, take note of the situation. Are you um, hungry? Have yeah. you eaten lately? Are you Seriously. thirsty? Did you get a nap? Like, yeah, I know. Did you just stub your toe right before you had this right. conversation? Like, there are things, and one of the biggest triggers, or not a trigger, but one of the biggest things I will overlook is like if I get, if I get a, a, a phone call or a piece of mail, mm-hmm. something that has frustrated me, mm-hmm. and I've like I feel like I already did what I need to do to deal with that thing, a mm-hmm. medical bill, mm-hmm. and then someone wants to have a conversation with me, I know right <laughs> then I'm like, no, no, this isn't gonna work because yeah. I'm, I'm upset about that thing. Yeah. Um, so observe yourself, then seek support. This is self care. This yeah. is an overused term, but really, um, get hydrated, take a drink of water, man. Taking a drink is like of such water. a great of water <laughs> is such a great reset yeah. because it, it just forces you like, okay, all right. All right. And there's something that happens when we just are, it's cooling, you know, it's yes, it's good. Take a drink yeah. of water, get a snack. Yeah. Take a nap. These are things that like little kids need, but we're, we're human. Yeah. Those are, th- and <clears throat> speak like, um, after you've been away from the conflict, like, mm-hmm. and you've had time to stop and observe, um, like, what do you need in that moment? Do you need someone yes. to support you? Do you need another person to talk about? Mind you, someone like an accountability partner, not yeah. like someone, not who's a your, sounding board, not your gossip friend mm-hmm. who you just want to badmouth someone with, right. but like, is there somebody 
that is mature in their faith mm-hmm. who can actually guide you, support you, love you through this, your spouse, yeah. your whatever, whoever someone that is. of someone of good moral character. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So, and, I, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But, but, uh, it, go ahead. It's on you. Um, and part of this, um, we've talked a lot about our inner circle. We talk about oh, yeah. it every week and, but it's amazing to me how many of the things that we, um, find in our discussions mm-hmm. that I'm like, Oh, like the inner circle is where I see some of this, um, being potentially cultivated. Yes. Like this is where, and the people who are in our, in our inner circle, inner, inner talk, circle. Inner, inner, her, um, we have relationship with them mm-hmm. that goes beyond just like, Oh yeah, I'm having a rough day. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is bad. No, it's like, Hey man, like I see this in myself mm-hmm. and I'm sure you see it too. <laughs> um, so I just need you to, I need you to pray for me one, but I also need you to hold me accountable. Yeah. I need you to tell me when you see these tendencies creeping up. I need to know these things because, and it's not in a way of like, I need to manage my image or I need to just make sure that I'm being a good person. It, yeah. it goes so much deeper than that. This is, I want to be um, the best that I can be for the people in my life. I want to yeah. be able to serve the best that I can. I can't serve people well when I'm flying off the handle about every little thing I can't control. Flying off the handle. Look at you. I can't. It's like an ax head flying off. Anyway. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. So, um, so, if you don't know about the inner circle, that's where we personally have, have benefited from having these people in our lives. Yeah. 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 So, and if you want to know more about it, website is www. A bunch of W's. Yeah. Dot Patreon.com <laughs> slash Nick Smith podcast. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. If yeah. you got value from this at all, please share it. Yeah. Please send it to someone. Please let somebody know about the Nick Smith podcast. Yes. This has been the Nick Smith podcast. We hope you've gotten a dose of real life. No myth. Be, Be blessed. blessed. Thank you.